I believe we are live here with uh, Quantum Leap Live, and I'm just going to double check one thing because uh, sometimes you never live till I actually see it on my phone, and I got the uh, proof here in the, the pudding. And welcome to Quantum Leap Live, a real a special edition, really, with um, somebody I've very Corey and I are both excited to interview Corey's actually known her longer than I have Dale Marie Golden um, really a, a business leader and you know banker community leader nonprofit fundraiser event promoter and um, <laughs> what what else can we add to the list Dale Marie I'm, I'm gonna do the full bio in a in a in a minute here but um, I did want to first um, introduce my co-host Corey Nod and Corey if you don't mind just introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about how you know Dale Marie. Hey everyone Corey Nott I am a business coach with Take Wing Coaching and co-hosting this program with David Kirsten. I have known Dale Marie through BNI for many years. I we probably first ran into each other when she first launched her group what was that in 2008 2007 somewhere around there and um but I've been a director in the Oakland area for a while, and we were in the same chapter together for many years as well. And of course, I bank with Bridge Bank. <laughs> right. So you can provide a professional uh, testimonial on her banking, and I've heard a lot from folks who use her about her great service. And we're going to talk a bit more a bit more about that. And we also have a special guest, Eloise Middleton, a well-known realtor here in Oakland and also a community and business leader um, in a lot of ways. And from, um, so we're gonna introduce, um, let me introduce, um, first say, Dale, how are you today? And do, do you, could you introduce yourself and your guest here before we get started? Absolutely, it's great to be here. And as I like to say, I'm Dale Marie Golden, Golden like your money. Money, you got it. Um, even I I was in a meeting one time and Libby Schaff, Mayor Libby Schaff was in the audience and she yelled out money. So the whole town knows. Uh, I It's my honor to introduce my, my good friend, my client and have known um, Eloise Middleton literally for decades. And um, she is an amazing realtor person. She deals with luxury real estate. And she also is very, very active in the community. And she is a realtist. I'll let her tell you what that's about. Um, and um, I'm really proud to know Eloise and the difference that she's making for um, black and brown people to own homes. And Eloise is a champion with that. So we, we really need her in our community. So um, Eloise Middleton, that's an that okay introduction, David? Perfect, and uh, we, we don't wanna keep Eloise uh, too long. It's our policy here on uh, Quantum Leap to have the, the guests, you know, say their pitch first or um, their um, story and um, with that I wanted to ask Eloise just how, how you you guys originally met or that story I know um, Dale Marie touched on it and what's what's been your experience like working with her and knowing uh, somebody of you know Dale Marie's caliber. Dale Marie is an amazing woman and I know that VOE Visions of Exchange would not be in existence without her help. When we first started, she was one of the third people for me to call. And I called her the first time and she didn't call me back. I called her the second time and she didn't call me back. I called her the third time because I'm persistent. I said, you know, my husband said you would call me back. <laughs> and so we talked and we started VOE together. It's been an amazing ride. And I am so grateful for, to her for helping us to start the chapter and just kept growing. And she started a number of other chapters without me, but that was her first foot into being on. <laughs> and of course, she's now helping me grow my business. I am, I am a client, I've been a client, and we started in January. I hired, I was able to hire someone to be an assistant, and I now have a buyer's agent. Yes. We have actually 
uh, more than doubled my business this year. So I'm extremely excited about growing the business. And she spoke about my helping the community with uh, having helping people buy homes, first time home buyers. We do programs. Uh, we have a first time home buyer Zoom call now every second Saturday okay. at 10 a.m. And so if anyone that wants to buy a house and don't know how to get down payment assistant money, they should ask me. Thank you so much. And um, I, I don't know if uh, Corey and Eloise know each other. I know Corey actually um, told me a lot about your chapter and um, Dale Marie before I even met her. And so I've, you know, really been looking forward to having you on for a while because I really just see you as such a role model and, you know, business leader, you know, both in the community, but also in the business sector. And I think as we go into really a, a what I'm calling another new economy, I think it's helpful to have folks, you know, myself included, um, people, role models to look to in the business community that it's not really you know all about dollars and cents and the bottom line it's actually about being a good person and you know doing a lot of things for the community you know it's almost looking at you and your um success record of success really you know your business as a banker is almost I don't want to say footnote, but it's only part of what you do that makes you Dale Marie. And, um, you know, I, I know you th that's that's your major part of your career. And we, we do want to refer folks to you for their banking needs, you know, small business, bigger business. And you're excellent at what you do there. But you've used that success to really do so much more for the community, the nonprofit sector, and all the things that you're involved in, and all the people that you've touched with all this knowledge. And um, with with that, I just wanted to actually quit talking myself and uh, give that as the context, but um, just have you tell us a bit about um, your professional background and some of the things that you've done in your professional life. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, please be careful when you say my uh, my job is a footnote. I hope my boss isn't watching. <laughs> at least yet. He doesn't know about this. I, he wanted to talk to me at this time and I said, uh, how about 3.30? So, <laughs> so um, you know, I think it's all how we start out and Maybe Eloise has even heard this story before, but I was around 11 years old and my brother had a paper route and my brother wanted to go to camp and he was gonna be gone two weeks. And his boss said, if you're gone, I'm gonna give your paper route to somebody else. And he's like, no, 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 you can't do that. It took me a long time to get this job. And he said, no, I, this is, that's the rule. So he was telling, uh, telling my mom and my dad, and I was sitting there at the kitchen table and I said, I'll do it. Then you don't have to lose it. <laughs> so sure enough, what I did is I put the newspapers and at the time I wasn't working out with TNT, so I wasn't strong enough. I could do it now, but I wasn't strong enough to carry all those papers. So I had a little red wagon. So it was my little brother's little red flyer wagon and I walked around the neighborhood and my brother used to throw the paper and it would hit the door and then they would know the paper was there. Well, I also found out I wasn't that athletic. I would try to throw and it wouldn't hit the door. <laughs> it would go off somewhere else in the lawn. So what I started to do is I would leave the um, wagon at the sidewalk and I would walk up to the door, ring the doorbell, and if someone was home, I would hand them the paper. Well, after my first week, ooh, payday, I, my tips were so good that when my brother came back from camp, <laughs> I didn't wanna give it back. And so it's just starting out, I think since the very beginning, of any of my jobs, I've just wanted to give 110%. I wanna be the one to ring the doorbell and hand you the paper rather than throw it into the garden. And you know, just thinking about that, it's, it's, it's been a trend. Um, 
Another fun story, I and I think this has really helped also with dealing with people. I was a high school, well, junior high school English teacher. And you tried teaching seventh and eighth graders English. <laughs> and at that time, the the girls were just wanted to be in high school. The boys just wanted to be in recess. Um, nobody wanted to pay attention. Hormones were crazy. And I'm trying to get them to read serious literature. Well, I could tell that the kids just weren't engaging. And now I'm dating myself, but I brought in Brian's song was big then. And Brian's song was about football. And so the guys got involved as well. The principal came in and pulled me out of the classroom. He said, this is not on our required reading. And I said, yes, but look who's reading every single one in this class. And he's like, okay. <laughs> so sometimes you just have to kind of follow your intuition. And then when I left teaching, I went into sales. And uh, you have time for the Bill Heim story? Just real quick. So I'm in sales. <laughs> And Bill Heim says to me, um, I've got an opening for you. And I was living in the time in upstate New York. My boyfriend at the time had just gotten a job in California. So I said, okay, I'll take a job in California. And he said, okay, I'll tell you what, I've got an opening in Minnesota. Now, Minnesota is a little different than California, okay? He said, I've got an opening in Minnesota, but if you're rookie of the year, I will pay for your entire move to California. He said, you just have to follow my advice. I said, okay, because I want to go to California because I'd wake up in Minnesota and they'd go, we're going to reach a high of zero today. <laughs> It's like, oh dear, I need to go to California. He said, Dale, just do five sales calls a day. If you just do five, you'll be rookie of the year. So I would plan my day and I'd try to get three done when I was fresh in the morning and then have a Heath bar. Oop, I shouldn't say that out loud. And then uh, reward myself and go and do two more guess what? I became rookie of the year. So we're down in Nashville, Tennessee, having the big awards banquet. And they pull me up and say, Dale, tell us why you were so successful. And I said, I really just did what, what Bill Heim told me to do. He said, just do the regular five sales calls a day. So that's what I did. And I look over and I see Bill and he's got this Cheshire cat grin and there's kind of this little Twitter and laughing and I didn't get it. And somebody said, Dale, the required sales calls are three. So I was training myself and that's what Bill Heim did to go above and beyond. And so that's when I try to mentor people and mentor small business owners is because a lot of time my entrepreneurs, it's just them and they forget that they actually can go that extra mile to be different in their business. So all of this between being a teacher and a salesperson and now a banker, it's all about teaching, nourishing, mentoring others to be the best they can be because you can tell somebody and it happens in workout. David, I know now you and I have the same coach. Liam will say, pull it back as far as you can. So I pull that thing back and then he'll say, pull it further. <clears throat> and you know what? I'm able to pull it further. So that's what we all need to remember to do. Great. Thank you. And there's a lot of values that you exemplify that, you know, is almost too much to get in. I think that teamwork is something that I've really gotten from you. And I actually have saw, you know, got, 
gathered that from visiting your visions of exchange. And I'd suggest that to any small business owner who wants to see you in action to visit your B and I chapter and see the great group of entrepreneurs. You know, Eloise is a member of that chapter. Visions of Exchange. It meets on. Uh, is it Thursday two, mornings? Or, at Thursday 7. mornings at seven a.m. And I, I didn't want to um, kind of diminish your career in any way. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself with the analogies. I, you were, uh, you are currently the vice president of Bridge Bank. That you've been in that capacity since two thousand seven with Bridge Bank, which is one of the top you know small business banks. If you look at you know banks in Oakland, and I've really talk to you about your offerings. You have a full slate of business and small business services. You were the vice president of Wells Fargo Bank from 1993 to 2007 before you were in that capacity. You actually went to the Claremont. Is that considered one of the Claremont colleges, Pomona College? Oh, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I actually did an exchange program with Pomona from Colby College in Maine. So I'm bi-coastal. So okay. I was in Maine and went to an exchange program, and that's where I fell in love with California. And I said, I'm going to transfer to Pomona. And there, when you think about Colby and 10 feet of snow, and you're going to Southern California where everybody's wearing flip-flops, um, they were smart that they put in that early on that no one would be allowed to transfer from Colby to Pomona. So I had to go before like the teachers and judge of why I would be an exception to transfer. And my dad went in and he said, nope, I'm not paying. I want her to graduate from Colby and come back to Maine. And they said, if I transferred, I'd still get a Colby degree. So um, I ended up listening to my dad. I still do. He turned 89 on Friday. And uh, I got a wonderful experience at Pomona, but I graduated with a Colby degree in Waterville, Maine. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Then you did your graduate work at the University of Rochester, Rochester, New York in English. So you are, a, you know, a, I see you now where you get some of the, the, the literary and, you know, a lot of uh, references that you use. And now you're actually being considered for a position on the uh, Oakland City of Oakland Parks and Recreation Foundation. So congratulations about that. And we're, we're going to talk about some other work that you do with nonprofits and also Leadership Oakland a bit later. But I just wanted to kind of paint a fuller picture of your professional background, which brings me to my second question about how you were adapting to the COVID-19 environment in your personal and professional life. Well, I think just like anything in life, I truly think it's your attitude. Um, I haven't, I've pretty much been um, sheltered in place. And uh, this weekend I went big, big trip to the card store. And the nice thing is I've been home. So I've been writing more cards and sending more mail out, which I think people really appreciate. And the gentleman at the card store said, how are you doing during this? Cause he knows that I'm kind of a extrovert at times and like people. And he just couldn't picture me sitting at home. And I said, it's fabulous. And he said, he said, do you know, I ask every single person that's come in for the last seven months, how it is. And they go on and on how terrible it is. He goes, you're the first one, the first one that said it's fabulous. And I said, think of the choices. I said, I can be here. I said, unfortunately, I've been tested four times for COVID, but I'm four times negative. It could be worse. It always can be worse. So it's your attitude. It is your attitude. And I said, I love it. I said, I live up above the zoo. And even though the, my branch is right downtown, it could still take me a half an hour to get to work and coming home in rush hour, it could take me an hour. So the best gift that anybody can ever give 
is the gift of time. So I've got the gift of time. So I've got, I look at it as I've got another hour and a half to my day. So I find that very fulfilling, very exciting. And it's interesting. I actually have been more conscious about time working from home. So at noon, I stop. At work, I never stopped. If I wasn't going to meet a client for lunch, I worked through lunch. I don't do that anymore. And I started not doing it because I wanted to see what Gavin Newsom said about how bad things were or what's happening with the fires or what's happening with, with the pandemic. And I also try to shut it off by 5.30, which many times at work, I would stay to seven or 7.30. Um, and small things, I mentioned this in the family paths talk I gave, um, my staff would always come in and interrupt me to approve checks. And I just let them interrupt me. I mean, cause it was important, but being at home, I realized how rude that was to my client, even though it was important that I look at the check. So now my staff know I'm on a zoom call. I'll do the approvals all at once afterwards simple little things like that but time management i've really gotten a handle on since since having to work at home great thank you and i just have one more question then i'm going to turn it over to corey who actually banks with you and i'd like to have see if he can give a small testimonial about working with you as a banker and um, I'm, I'm looking at that at, at a future date. We've talked about that. So I appreciate the insights that you've gave, given me about Bridge Bank and my banking. And um, I, you mentioned this um, address at Family Paths. And I just, you know, I wanted to ask about this because I think this is something that really makes you unique. And I think there's just few people out there in a position to give this kind of speech that you gave. And um, for those who don't know, you're, uh, I believe, a, a board member at Family Pass, or you're involved with Family Pass in some way? Um, Family Pass is my client, and okay. and I just truly believe in what they do and, and am willing to help any of my nonprofit clients in any way I can. Okay, great. Um, you gave the keynote address at their a virtual fundraiser the other day, and you know, there was like three screens of people. It was a packed house and it was a, an impressive address. I thought, you know, kind of brought a tear to my eye and some of the emotion and the connection that you raised in that speech. I just wanted to see if you could give us a little kind of crib sheet about what your, what your message was and, you know, what the importance is of, you know, supporting our nonprofits and kind of doing more than just running our business these days, just the importance of what you do in terms of giving back to the community. Well, I think now with what's going on with the pandemic, with some of the at-risk youth, um, when things are bad, now things have gotten worse for many. They, they could actually come from a home that suddenly a parent isn't working. Um, as you know yourself, David, your sweet daughter is in the background doing her kindergarten work. So suddenly people have kids at home. Um, I had one, one mother that a child came up to her and said, mom, you're a really bad teacher. <laughs> They're doing everything they can. It's, it's, really, it's really tough out there. And so suddenly all these kids have to do Zoom classroom and there are kids that don't have laptops. There are kids that don't have Wi-Fi available. So these are things that sometimes we just, we just forget about. Um, and that's why I think it's more than ever so important to support our nonprofits. Um, things like uh, somebody came to me and they said, Dale Marie, you're on the board of Oakland Ballet. My child is so looking forward to the Nutcracker. And, you know, I have to say, it's not going to happen. Um, that's really tough. And uh, we go into the schools with the Oakland Ballet 
to do, teach them about dance, to teach them about the background. For Luna Mexicana, we talked to, talk to them about all the culture and the history. Um, and the same with the Oakland Symphony. The Oakland Symphony has the Muse program, again, about helping children. And for some children, this is the, the bright side of their day, to be able to dance or to be able to sing or to be able to play an instrument. So I think we don't realize that if we just do, if we just help one person, just one person, it could change their life. Um, I was on the board of Covenant House and Covenant House kids would be, um, these are kids that were in the foster care system. <clears throat> and suddenly when they're 18, uh, the parents aren't getting paid. And there are a lot of really good foster parents, but there are other foster parents that were doing it for the money. And guess what? When you're 18, you still need love. You still need food. And we had a boy that we gave a sandwich to in Oakland and he came back and was drug free, alcohol free, ended up finishing school. And now he drives the van to go give the sandwiches or the socks to the kids that are homeless on the street. And all it takes is one. That's what we gotta remember. Thank you. And you are such a powerful spokeswoman. Uh, and I know you've, um, you know, you have a lifetime of experience in this. And what I've really seen is how you've used your, your business, your success as a banker to translate that into helping others, which is just a beautiful thing. And um, I did w want to turn it over to Corey now, who actually is involved in, uh, went through a program that you actually sit on the board of, uh, another very important program in the city of Oakland, Leadership Oakland. With that, I'll turn it over to Corey. Yeah, for those who don't know, Leadership Oakland is a uh, professional development. It's, it's uh, about networking. It's about leadership training. It's uh, about civic participation. And uh, Leadership Oakland is, of course, specific to Oakland, but for those of you who are not in Oakland, uh, I would encourage you to look at leadership in other locations. And with that, I was going to ask uh, Dale Marie, you've been involved with Leadership Oakland for quite a while. I've been there for a few years, but uh, and you also help run the alumni organization. Can you tell us a little more about your involvement and uh, what you believe about the, the leadership program? I think the leadership program is really a, a unique opportunity to get to know the city you live in. Um, when I was involved, I'm a graduate of 2012, and um, I saw it as adult field trips every the first Friday of every month, because one would be um, going to the Port of Oakland and being right down there with the cranes and learning about it or being at the um, Oakland Museum and learning about different nonprofits or being and watching city council. I mean, that's amazing enough. Um, so each, each month you do a different, whether it be civic as, as Corey mentioned or um, the nonprofit or transportation. And at the end of 2012, our class was like, what we're doing is so wonderful, we can't stop. So um, several of us in 2012, we started the Oakland Leadership Alumni Association. It had tried to be started a few times, but every single time it kind of fizzled out. Um, well, we've been doing this since 2012, so eight years. Um, wow. That's a long time. Uh, <laughs> well, we've been doing this for 12 years, right? Eloise with Visions of Exchange. <laughs> so um, the, the difference with Oakland leadership is that these are people from nonprofits. These are entrepreneurs. These are corporate people. So you have a real mixture. So you really get to know a lot of different people, but all these people are what make this city work of ours. And what we continue to do uh, right now, matter of fact, our next happy hour, no game changer event is October 21st, next Wednesday. And what we'll do is have two alum 
And one happens to be Liz Luke, um, who has started uh, a music business. And the other is Robin Anderson, who's the former executive director of Access Dance. And she now lives in, in Texas, but she's gonna be on the Zoom call, thanks to Zoom, thanks to the pandemic. See, there's always a silver lining. She can attend. And we'll do a talk about how Oakland Leadership helped them and share that with other alums. So um, it's a great way to learn, to continue to grow. Um, we have happy hours as well. And again, we all miss hugging and being in person, but like everybody else, we're doing the best we can. Oh, Corey, are you muted? Sorry. Yeah, I agree. I've attended several of the uh, alumni events and um, really strongly encourage people to look at the, the leadership program, especially in business. I found one of the, the greatest things for me, too, is I met a lot of people I probably would not have met um, through normal small business channels. Uh, it's, you know, there's a number of people in the community, different organizations put people into the program and so on. And also, if you have any political interest, uh, the leadership programs are a great way to get um, just to get some inside to the uh, the community that you want to be a part of. Um, so, Dale Marie, and all that you do, uh, some folks may not understand that your day job is serving as vice president of Bridgebank. Could you tell us a bit about your professional capacity at Bridgebank and why East Bay businesses should consider you and Bridgebank for their banking needs? And well, I think um, one thing, even though, you know, we're really in a unique position because in a way we're considered a mid-market bank um, because we're owned by Western Alliance Bank, but Bridge Bank is in Northern California. So I'm in the Oakland office, there's San Francisco, San Jose. In Southern California, we're Torrey Pines where there are nine branches in San Diego, one in LA, one in Beverly Hills. In Arizona, we're Alliance Bank of Arizona. And in Nevada, in Las Vegas, we're Bank of Nevada. And in Reno, we're First Independent Bank of Reno. So that makes us very unique. We're large enough that we've got the bells and whistles of a big bank, but yet each one of the banks gives back to their own area. So that's why we're considered a community bank because I'm giving back to my community. And, and that's, that's pretty important. Um, so that the people that bank with me are going to see in their neighborhood, the improvements we make, the loans we give, they're gonna see the new businesses coming in. They're gonna see buildings that are occupied, buildings that are sold because of the loans that we're giving. So that, that makes a difference. For me, what's really different is that in most big banks, you have maybe one person that does equity lines, one person that does merchant card services, one person that does personal, one person that does business. The advantage with me is that, Corey, I can open your business account, but yet I can open your sweet daughter's brand new savings account. So I can do it all. If you have um, someone needs an equity line, I'm licensed to do an equity line. So I can do uh, all those things. And that's really unique these days because for the most part, all the big banks are all pretty siloed. So with me, you, you get me 24 seven, if you will. And with the whole thing with being able to text and email, um, I'm there for you in all sorts of different capacities. <laughs> Excellent. And um, we are just about at time. I don't know. I did want to ask Corey if he had any comments. I didn't mean to jump in there. And I did want to give <laughs> Eloise a, a chance to um, comment on some of the conversation because she's she sat there patiently. And if she has anything to add, I wanted to ask that too. Well, I will say that I am a customer of Bridge Bank, and uh, it's great having uh, Dale Marie there. But they also have a great staff. They're always really helpful. Um, you know, for a business bank, it's worked out really well for me. And, uh, you know, they, they have the online apps and everything. So living out as far as out as I do, 
it's great that I can, you know, make the big deposits that I need to do and, and take care of business by phone and by app. Um, that would be a lot more difficult, I think, with many other banks, but they're definitely a good, strong business. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and if Corey comes in with a million dollar check, they'll call me and I'll go, yep, I know where he lives. I'll approve it. <laughs> well, even, even for the, you know, the ones that I've been depositing, they still call you and they, you know, get it cleared that day. Thank you. Punch. I'm keeping your image. Come on. <laughs> Half million dollar checks. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Thanks, uh, Eloise. Did you have anything you wanted to comment on any of the discussion we've had or anything? Last words you want to say? Have folks, our viewers, know about Dale Marie? No, except I just want to thank you guys for allowing me this opportunity and thank you, Dale, for sharing stories that I didn't know about, especially about the little girl in the wagon. That would have been interesting to see. Uh <laughs> Thank you so much. It was my pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Eloise. And Eloise, you, your son, remember you opened up your son's account with me way back in the day. And uh, Eloise and I also have daughters that are the exact same age. I don't have as many sons as you do. Eloise has about 10, but um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so we've been following each other and uh, I've known her husband, Dennis, for 30 years now. We used to, we would share fundraisers together back in the day. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Dale Marie. And we are uh, over time. I wanted to add some additional time because I knew there were so many aspects to talk about. And we are going to feature Leadership Oakland on a future um podcast i'm actually awesome. going to come to that 21st me meeting on october 21st and um so we're going to do at least one segment on that and we will look for other ways to have you contribute your story and share the invaluable knowledge that you have be it a future segment or you know an event that we're looking at um and if you have any last words of advice for you know entrepreneurs out there or, or community members during this time feel free to share it otherwise we can close it there you know i have um you can't go wrong with a quote and if you do a quote you should do it from somebody that's pretty well respected how about Gandhi? Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>